Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that if I've done this right, you should be watching me in black and white. If I've forgotten, hi, welcome to Technicolor. Um, you will have seen from the title and the thumbnail, and if you've read it, the description, that this is a new collab series on my channel with the ever beautiful Nola from hashtag my so called life 1977 and Laura from a gold star work. We are officially three continents, one palette, and that palette is a Colourpop palette. It is a nine pan, hey look at that, orange you glad palette. And Nona has filmed with it, and Laura has filmed with it, and I have filmed with it. And our challenge for this first outing with the Colourpop and nine pan palettes was that we have to use every single shade in the palette and that includes a pressed glitter so if you want to see just exactly how well <coughs> apparently my rugby actions are still there because I caught it if you want to see exactly how well we did or didn't do and whether this falling off my hat is an indication of how well my look has gone then my friend, you are in the precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Sorry if my lighting goes weird, it's very strange out there today, I don't know what the weather's doing. But I need to get this filmed because it has to go up in three days and tomorrow I'm picking up my new car which means I'm going to want to be playing with the new car. So, I would have told you in the intro that this is a collab between Nona, Laura and myself. And we are calling it Three Continents, One Palette. Yes, the fan is on because it's also ridiculously hot in here. Uh, otherwise, I would melt. Uh, we decided that we'd all got quite a lot of these Colourpop 9 pan palettes, the monochrome ones, and we decided that we wanted to sort of come together and do a series using them. Um, initially individual palettes and then probably combining them. Uh, we're going to do them once a month, first Saturday of every month is the plan, fingers crossed, to um, actually first Saturday of every month. Was that this one or was that a different palette? I don't know. I've lost track. That might be a completely different one. Anyway, we're doing these once a month. And we are starting with Orange, you're glad. Uh, but the thing is, this contains a pressed glitter. Right in the middle there. And we decided to set ourselves the challenge of having to use every shade on our face somewhere. Glitter. I have to pick up my new car tomorrow. You don't know how difficult it is to get glitter off your face. Wish me luck. Right, um, although this is a collab, this is a teaching channel, um, with my chronic pain I don't blend as quickly as a lot of people do. I bring you right in and I talk you through step by step so complete beginners can follow this the same as experts can. Not that I'm claiming to be an expert, not by a long chalk. Um, however, if I am going too slowly for you, please use the speed widget and make me talk a little bit quicker. Uh, as always, when I zoom you in, I'm going to talk through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. So if you already know this lot, then just zoom forward until you start to see me put some colour on. Let's get you zoomed in. 
Oh, I don't know why, but I'm struggling to take lean forward. And yet, it's not like I've got a different chair. It's my usual chair. How bizarre. Oh, it must just be a high pain day for me. Right. Now. When I look straight forward with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. Hang on, I need to have a wiggle. I will most likely cut that bit out. Or I might forget and you'll be able to see it. Right, with my brows relaxed, looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line part or all of your mobile lid that you have a half or a full hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. You can still follow anybody's tutorials. All you need to do is get a brush something like this or a pencil brush and on your static lid sketch out a new crease line. Okay, obviously this is going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes. All right. Now, I've got deep set eyes, I've also heard them referred to as double lidded eyes recently, um, and I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get in that I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid, um, I get uh, if I cut my crease, I have to go up onto the upper lid, I can't just cut across the socket. And even when I use glitter glue, if I use glitter, I get a bare patch right through there. Let me show you why. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that disappears back away. And if I cover my static lid, and close my eye. You can see I've got lid there too that also tucks back away and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give us the same issues where we get the transference of shimmer we have to cut higher and it always takes our glitter off. Now the way that we deal with it is slightly different. When we are putting the deepest colour through our crease we just have to relax our brows more and just double check that the colour can be seen when our eyes are relaxed. Okay. Right, let's time to put some colour on. Right, I'm going to start with, um, I've got a, linked in my description, I've got a film for brushes that I recommend. And this is one of the ones from the AliExpress set. This is brush number eight. Oh Lord, I genuinely have absolutely no idea how I'm going to get this done. But... We will do what we will do. I think I will start off with let's start off with creamsicle. And I'm gonna pop that just on the inner part of my upper lid here. Um, if you're wondering, uh, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF and primed and on my eyes is my usual Crow and Pebble primer in cotton. I do have a discount code for them. All my discount codes are linked in the description box below. All clearly marked whether they are um, affiliated or not, whether I own from them. I'm just going to build this colour up here first half. What I like about the um, the Crow and Pebble primer is I've not set it but you can still start blending straight away. You don't have the issue of it being sticky because it's not sticky and you can see it hasn't creased even with my deep set eyes it hasn't creased. Um, they do six shades plain white, chocolate brown and black being the lightest and deepest and then they've got three different skin tone shades in the middle. So whatever you are looking for, you should be able to find a colour that suits your need. 
Um, they do sell half size pots, which is what I did initially, and I've already hit pan on it because ever since I tried theirs, I have not used any other eye primer. Uh, it's even taken over from my MAC paint pot, and it's better than Tarte Shape Tape, and you don't need to set it, and you still get impact. I keep sitting back and double checking that the shapes are the same, because obviously, unless you're James Charles and Photoshop your eyes, yes, that's shade, um, nobody's eyes are perfectly symmetrical, so you may have to take one side higher than the other to get them to look the same. So, creamsicle, that's shade number one. I'm really not looking forward to this. Right, but it's a challenge. Challenges are fun. I've got a microfiber cloth here that I clean the brushes on. Um, I actually prefer that to a colour switch now. I find it's softer on the bristles, um, especially if you've got natural fibre brushes. I mean, this isn't this is a synthetic, but if you have got a natural fibre, right. I'm going to rise and grind next, and pop that on the outer edge. That's really beautiful actually. I was not expecting that to be quite so bright. I will be honest, I do struggle here sometimes and here, both sides, with where I've got um, creasing there I've also got some dry patches. But that's actually, that's gone on without any problem at all. I'm just going to really lightly buff where the two colours meet just to blend them. Okay, that really has surprised me. I was not expecting that. Because in the pan, it looks more of a pumpkin orange. Because there is another orange in here, which is... See, I'm going in with this one. Lord, I didn't know how bright that one's going to be. Thank goodness I decided to use that under my eye. Right. So again, just checking that I've got the shapes about the same. But it's entirely up to you when you're blending, um, whether you want to do an editorial look where you have quite sharp edges and quite bold transitions, or if you want softer edges and a more blended transition, it's entirely up to you. And if you prefer it to be a harsher line and more editorial, then you do you, boo. If other people don't like it, then that's tough. It's your face. You wear your makeup how you want. Um, I do circular movements when I'm blending, because it gently moves the skin around, and I blend that direction when I'm going towards the nose and in that direction when I'm coming away from it. Just helps prevent that tiger striping. I do get it here though. I've got super deep creasing there from when the um, hospital pulled my eye around a lot as a child to find out why I wasn't seeing properly out of it. I needn't have bothered, I went blind in that eye anyway. Wow, these are really staining the brush. Okay, that's huh, two colours down, seven to go. <laughs> Right, I'm going to go into the lightest matte, which is Zested. I'm just going to use that just to blend out that top edge and really soften it down. Yep, I like that. I like to leave a little bit of a gap my brow and the top colour just so that the whatever brow highlight I'm using shows but today I felt like taking the colour all the way up even though it is a very light colour at the top
if you don't have a really light colour in your palette and you want to bl blend out at the top, um, either use a brush without any powder on it or use a transition shade, whatever your transition shade would be, um, or translucent. Right, that's three down, four to go. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab a slightly more tapered brush. Let's grab, let's grab this one. This is the Morphe M562. As you can see, very. I'm going to go into a Mimosa Mammy. Mimosa Mammy. I'm going to use that to blend out. Edge here. And sort of give me a slightly more rounded edge to it there. So, Nona and Laura. Now I have collabed with both girls before. Nona I've collabed with just as Nona and as part of the Bitches of Eastwick group and also in a couple of larger group collabs um, and Laura so far I have only collabed with in group collabs but she is going to be joining me on my photo inspiration series uh, and as she's an artist she's actually choosing the first photo and it's going to be one of her art pieces, so I cannot wait for that. Um, I always give people the option on my photo collab whether they want to go first or whether they want me to choose the first picture. And she said, uh, can I go first and would you mind if it's one of my art pieces? And I'm like, do you know what? I was really hoping you were going to say that. So I have collabed with both girlies before and I get on so well with both of them. And we like to give our different groups names, partly because it's really it, it's so much easier when you're in group chats to work out which group you're talking to, but also because then when we're going we're going to be putting up quite a lot of these, um, you know you can actually search for the group name, which is three continents, one palette, and it should bring up all of them. I mean I'm actually going to create a playlist and pop mine into the playlist but obviously if you do and I'll be linking uh, Laura's and Nona's films and channels below but if you search Three Continents One Palette it should then eventually bring up every single one that we've done by all three of us because um, I know there's at least one palette that I've not got yet I might end up buying. By the time we get round to that bit, it depends. I normally wait until there are two that I want because otherwise it just makes it too expensive on the postage. But I don't like to buy more than two at once because we get clobbered in the UK with... When it arrives we get 20% tax and then we get a handling fee of anything from 8 quid to... 20 quid, 30 quid? Yeah. Right, so what have I used so far? Uh, one, two, three. I've used four of the mattes, haven't I? Yeah. But I'm going to the deepest matte, still on this brush here. And this is called Ya Peel Me. I love the puns in this palette, I really do. And I'm going to use this one to buff. I might change to a different. I'm going to grab a different brush for this. Uh, let me see now. Which one do I grab? Let's grab that one. This is one of my Rolling Lang Nickel Chic Pro eyeshadow brushes. It's clean, it's just stained. This is the only problem. Right, so I'm going to use this one to pop the deepest colour through my crease. Obviously if you've moved your crease up you follow your crease 
and with me I just need to relax my brow and make sure that when I'm blending it out and I've blended it up high enough there, that I can just see it over the top of my crease there. I'm just buffing that out. So, so far I've used five of the mattes. So I've got one matte, two shimmers and a glitter still to use. <sighs> That's what I was saying about how where well, it's going a little bit patchy there. That's because I have got a dry patch. So if that happens with you, blend it until you've got the blending you want around the edges. And then just load some more pigment onto the brush and just pat to build the colour up until you lose any blotchiness. And I'm also going to burn a little bit on the outer edge of my lid just there. So the girls, Nona, um, she's in the uh, America's continent obviously and I just love that woman. She is, I don't think I've ever seen her say a bad word or even a, even a slightly discouraging word about anybody. Um, she will always find something good to say about your film. Always. Um, and she does her best to comment on every film as well. Which I know can be difficult because I go, I have like certain days when I'm trying to put a comment on and I type it and press enter and it just disappears. Um, and then the next day I try and type the same comment on and it stays there but um, so I, I do always like films but I do apologize if my comments don't always show up but I do do my best to comment on everything that I watch even if it's just to put a love heart in if I've really not got a lot of time or I'm half asleep and don't want to type gibberish at you or if it's the start of the film and I've got autoplay on, I'll just put a heart in because I can't comment on, I can't refer to anything that you've said in the film because, but I don't want it to flick onto the next film and me miss um, putting a comment on. Okay, I like that. I'm just going to clean this brush off on my microfiber cloth. And then I'm going to get a flat brush. Do nicely and grab a spray. Now I'm going to use the Revolution Fixing Spray in vanilla and coconut. Pardon me, you can use any spray you want, but never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Always go in with a dry brush, wet the brush, then apply the pigment. So let's have a look. Squeeze me and tangerine dream. I think Tangerine Dream needs to go in the inner corner. So I'm just going to pack some pigment onto this brush. This is another one of the AliExpress brushes. It's brush number two, which they're calling a medium shader brush. So I pack pigment both sides, then I spray it. Then I'll make sure I dry the ferrule off so we don't get any moisture going down and loosening the glue that are holding these in. Uh, with this side I will grab a little mirror because um, obviously I can't close this side because where I'm blinding that one, if I close this one I can't see what I'm doing. So I will look down into the mirror so you can at least still see what's going on. So I'm going to pop this onto the inner third of the lid. Uh, 
that's actually really pretty. And you know what? That's so opaque, I might be able to get away doing the other eye as well. I do have to stretch this one out though because otherwise I get loose pigment building up in the crease in just there. And uh, then it ends up showering down during the day, which when I'm wearing my contact lens can be very painful. I did go for a while where I couldn't wear a contact lens because it sort of scratched my cornea. So, deep joy. So I've got that one on the inner corner. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So Laura. Uh, Laura is in New Zealand. And um, as I said before, she's an artist. And uh, I'd actually followed her channel for quite a while. And I was really pleased when she was in one of the group collabs because I'd never actually been brave enough to message her and say, mm, can I collab with you please? Because as I said, I did have that one particular person who everyone thinks is so lovely. She's an absolute bitch, not in a good way. And uh, Nona and Anya and myself all had problems with her. So it kind of knocked my confidence after I'd spoken to her. So I'd, I'd wanted to, because I, I'd been so amazed by some of Laura's artwork, I'd wanted to ask her to join my photo collab series for a long time. I just never had the courage. So I was so pleased when Nona suggested doing this um, Colourpop 9 pan series. Um, and she said that Laura was interested in doing it as well. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. And then I messaged Laura and said, oh, so here's how we're already collabing. Do you fancy? And she's like, yes please. So that's awesome. So there we go. That's, uh, I didn't tell you what shade that was, did I? That was Squeeze Me. Okay, so I've used seven of the nine colours so far. And that's a very orange look. But it is a very orange palette, so I don't quite know what else I was expecting. Right, I am going to pause you while I go off screen and put some foundation on. And then I'll be back and I've got two more shades I have to use. One of which is glitter. So, um, yeah, you will see me instantly. I will see you the very next time I press the record button. Hello. Right. Um, I kind of cheated a little bit because for blush I've got this little sample of California from Benefit, which is orange, so uh, to, to be quite honest, I put that on before I even thought about using one of these shades for my blush, so yay, not very clever me. Now I haven't done my brows yet, because I thought I could potentially use that deepest orange, the you peel me as my brow colour. I have got an orange brow pomade, funnily enough, from Colourpop, but as I kind of forgot myself with the blush, I kind of want to make amends with my brows. Okay. Yeah, right, this is working. This isn't doing too badly, actually. I suppose if I was sensible, I'd have done the darkest one at the front and the lighter one at the end. Could have knocked two more colours out that way, couldn't I? Mind you, to be fair, I have only got the luminous orange and the glitter that I haven't used yet. I'm not entirely sure luminous orange brows. I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've done some wafty looks. I'm not entirely sure. Luminous brows. 
and what's going to float on my boat today. So I'm just going to buff this through my brows and then just Yes, I used the Jeffrey one first and then I thought I don't really want to stain the pink brush with orange powder when I've been using that in pomades. I don't want to risk adding powder into a pomade. So I grabbed my backup spoolie. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into this one again and I'm going to go back into Ya Peel Me and I'm going to run that, join it up with the outer edge there and run that along the lower lash line like so. Just trying to think if I have an orange highlighter anywhere. Oh, I have. I've got one in the Jeffrey palette, but it's going to be way, 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 way too dark for me to use as a highlighter, so I might have to use a gold one instead. And then this brush I adore. This is the one that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. It's a nice flat brush but it's thick and chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes. And I'm going to go into Sunkissed, that, that luminous orange. <laughs> I'm going to use that to buff out the lower lash line. Yeah, I'm really glad that I didn't choose that for my brows. I think that would have been what a mistake at a maker. Oh, I could use the glitter as my highlight, couldn't I? Yes. Because I have to use it, otherwise I'm failing the challenge. And that would never do to fail the challenge on the first film. Just grab. This is actually, believe it or not, a lip brush that I bought from eBay. I think, oof, ten years ago now. At least ten years ago, if not more. Grab my Jeffrey a twenty-four carat highlighting palette out. See, these are my options. There isn't actually an orange one, is there? It's pink, that's what I was getting confused with. I'm going to go in with a little bit of Liberace on my inner corner. And then I think Sarcophagus on my brow. So let's pop a little bit of Sarcophagus under the brow highlight just there. Going to a Liberace for the inner corner. Okay, Liberace has gone hard pan on me. So over here I've got a spoolie that I use when shadows have gone hard pan, and I just use those to rough up the shadow basically so that you've then got loose pigment that you can easily pick up on your brush just like that See? that works for highlighters blushes anything any pressed pigment that you've got that gets hard pan just scratch the top of it with a spoolie Till you've got some loose pigment there and then you can easily pick it up on your brush 
and apply it to wherever you wish. Right. I need to do something with this glitter, don't I? Um, let me pause you a minute, put this away and zoom you back out a little bit. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. Okay, uh, I have applied mascara, black mascara, and the lipstick is uh, Colourpop Ariel from the Disney collection. Now I have to use the only shade I haven't used so far, which is the Press Glitter, which is Clementine. And I'm going to tap that on the top of my cheek here and up the temple to serve as my highlighter and then I have used all of the shades in the palette so I think I might change this for this. Tuck those strands back because it is way too hot to take my hair down. And go, ta da! Right, this is Orange You Glad. Three continents one palette using every single shade in the palette including the bloody glitter and yes I'm probably still going to have this glitter on my face or at least somewhere on my body wherever the shower washes it to tomorrow when I go to pick up my new car I cannot wait see what Nona and Laura have done with theirs and see how their looks turn out. Is it bad that I actually quite like the glitter look? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, oh that's Hubby coming in. Hello. Hello darling. Um, so, yeah, uh, glitter used as highlight, and I have used every single shade. Oh, may I see? Mm-hmm. Oh, very glittery indeed. I used every single shade in... Orange. Orange, are you glad? Mm, very nice indeed, very nice indeed. Thank you, darling. See you in a moment, honey. Right, have fun. <laughs> He's been gardening. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to see what Nona and Laura have done with theirs. Laura, being an artist, has probably done something absolutely fantastic with it. Uh, Nona, she's only been getting into colour just recently, but she's being surprisingly brave with it. Um, let's see if we all decided to use the glitter as the highlight, or whether one of the girls was brave enough to use it somewhere else. It's really bad that I quite like that. <coughs> right, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are unsubscribing people all the time, uh, which is very frustrating. And once you have double checked that and you've liked this film, if you liked it, and maybe left me a little comment to let me know if you think I did well in using all of the shades, or not, if the, whatever the case may be, um, please go across and check out both Laura, Gold Star Work, mm -hmm. and Nona, hashtag my son called Life 1977, and see exactly what looks they have achieved with the same palette. If, however, you have arrived here from one of the other girls' channels, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm not always this scatty, sometimes I'm better, sometimes I'm worse. Um, I am always going to be the half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird living in the south of England. Um, oh yeah, that's the third continent by the way, England. <laughs> I got halfway through doing that and then just completely forgot, didn't I? Yeah. 
That's the third continent. Europe. Not England. Europe. England's the country and it's far too hot. I need to go get myself a very, very cold iced coffee and cool down. Uh, but while you are... <sighs> Occasionally lapse into a foreign language to which nobody uh, has the guide. Not even me. Uh, but the rough translation would be, I really hope you enjoyed this film. Uh, I hope you are tempted indeed to press the like button for me. Drop me a comment, let me know which of the girls' channels sent you my way. And if you're not entirely sure if you want to subscribe yet, I have a lot of other films you could go and check out to make your mind up. If, however, you do decide to hit that subscribe button, don't forget to ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications, otherwise you will get no notifications because YouTube's like that. Right, that is quite enough for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.